Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about a topic that's come up time and again in the service community. That is, is it okay to call a Lambda function from another Lambda function? And if you publicly admit to calling functions directly like this, then you will probably raise a few eyebrows in the room. And I will have been one of the people that are giving you funny looks. But over the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of different contexts and situations. And it's made me think that there are more to this topic than meets the eye, and uh, there are more nuances that need to be discussed. That being said, let's talk about why lambda to lambda calls are often frowned upon. In most cases, a lambda function is just implementation detail, and it shouldn't be exposed as the system's primary API. If you want other people to talk to your system, then they shouldn't be talking to a lambda function directly. Instead, they should be talking to an HTTP interface via API gateway, or maybe an SNS topic if you're building an event processing system. This allows you to make changes later without having to also change the external facing API of your system. Maybe you start it off with a single Lambda function for the whole API because it's just easier. But as the API grows, you decide to split the logic into multiple functions and have a separate Lambda function for every single endpoint. Or maybe the throughput of your system has got to a point where it makes more economic sense to move the code into an ECS or EC2 cluster instead. These changes shouldn't affect how your consumers interact with your system. Okay, but what if both functions are in the same service? So we're not crossing any service boundaries and we don't have to worry about leaking implementation details. Well then, I think it still depends because there's still the question of efficiency. If you're calling the second function synchronously, where the first function waits for a response from the second function, then you're paying for extra invocation time and the cost. There are latency overheads for calling the second function, especially when it's a cold start. That's going to hurt the end-to-end -end latency your users experience, especially when both functions experience a cold start, which is not what you would want from your system. Plus, you will pay for the second function's invocation, and while it's running, you will also be double paying for its invocation time because you are still paying for the first function, which is just sitting there waiting for a response. Sure, lambda costs are usually pretty negligible, and if the functions don't run often, you might not even notice them at all. But you probably care about the end-to-end -end latency, especially if this is a user-facing feature and can impact your business KPIs like retention and the engagement rates. So in these cases, you are better off just merging the two functions into one and do everything inside one single Lambda function. And you can still achieve separation of concerns and modularity at the code level. You don't have to split them into multiple Lambda functions. But what if you're trying to offload some CPU intensive work or time consuming work from your API function so it can return quicker? Then I think it's all good here. So long as both functions are in the same service and they're both owned by you and not some other team in your company. And don't forget to configure a delta queue or an on failure destination for this second function. As a rule of thumb, you should always have a DL queue or on failure destination for any async functions. Also, you may still want to put something between these two functions in cases where you need to regulate the concurrency of the second function. For example, using a SQS queue or a Kinesis stream so that these tasks are processed in batches and you can smooth out any traffic spikes. This is especially important when dealing with downstream systems that aren't as scalable as Lambda. So to answer the question posed in the title of this video, it all depends on what it is you're doing. And to help you decide, here's a decision tree for when you should consider calling a Lambda function directly from another. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like and subscribe to help this channel grow. I post videos on AWS and the serverless every week, and hope to see you guys again soon. Until next time, stay safe.